Hey, uh, this is Louis Lubega, also known as Master Rui, and today we're talking storyboards. Yeah. So, what are storyboards? You know, uh, I think I would define storyboards as a rough representation or a rough sequence of images that are telling a story. And there are very many different types of storyboards. You know, uh, different places where storyboards are used. That is comics live action, animation, and all these different areas have a different way of doing storybooks. Today we'd like to focus on mostly comics. So why are we giving them such a focus today? Uh, one thing you should know is that storybooks, especially for comics, they act as a bridge between what you're doing with your script and what you hope to do with your layout pages. So the final layout page is the same as what we see in the final product, in the final comic. So the storyboard's supposed to be like the bridge in between there. You know, you don't want to jump straight from the other script and straight to the uh, the final page unless you, you don't have time uh, and you just want to get something done quick and you're deciding of where you're going with your story and everything. But if it's the first time you, you're reading your script, you, you're making your script uh, and you want it presented in the best way possible, you're gonna need a storyboard for it. You know, it's the best kind of thing you can do. Now, there are many ways you can make your storyboards. You can go the traditional route, or you can go the much more digital route. What we do these days is probably use programs like Photoshop, Storyboard Pro, Animate CC, you know, whichever program you're using. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as you can make, you can do some drawings, some scribbly scribbly drawings, man. Uh, you're good to go. Uh, the traditional route, well, I normally do storyboards depending on the situation I'm in at the, at the time. Uh, sometimes there's no, uh, I don't have access to my PC or my computer, I have no access to my digital tools. So I do it traditionally, just grab myself a piece of paper, a pen, and I'm good to go, you know, just draw everything that I can on, on the piece of paper. But uh, if we want to be more uh, environment friendly, We'd rather uh, do it digitally whenever we can. So there's, there's certain situations where you can't avoid uh, doing it uh, traditionally. For example, the, the times when there's no electricity where I'm staying and I have to make get my story, but it's done, man. Uh, but the best way they can approach that is by literally just grabbing my piece of paper and I just draw everything on it, you know, do my story, but old way you know the traditional way uh, i think it's just circumstance that calls for whichever method you want to use for making your story but there's no right or wrong way of doing it it's just ways so your storyboards could be as rough as a two-year-old scribbling a bunch of vomit <laughs> on a piece of paper or it could be as good as uh, Satoshi Kon or Hayao Miyazaki's storyboard. So uh, really, it's up to how confident you're feeling at that time and how much time you have to make a board. If you have very little time, you're probably gonna go for the vomit way of doing things. You know, you just do your two-year-old vomit as long as it can be understood. You know, the more important thing is that you get the idea across. But if you get some time and you know you, you, you're sending this storyboard to uh, a major producer or, or a major editor and you want it to be uh, as good as it can, well, you can go ahead, you know, uh, do the Satoshi Kon style DC. Okay, so what's so important about storyboards? Can't I just, you know, jump straight from my script and just make my final thing? You know, don't you think that's faster? And when I get things done quicker, because I mean, I don't need to draw this thing all over again if I have to make storyboards. Well, then my answer is well, it is important to, to make your storyboards. It's not like they're pointless. And there are very many reasons for that. One 
you're probably going to be faster. Oh, man. He just said he'd be faster. Come on, you'd run this thing twice. How can we be faster if we're doing it twice? Uh, well, the answer is simple. You're going to waste way less time thinking if you have your story boots done. So you want to do most of your grandiose thinking using your story boots. Because they're going to be like thumbnails. They're going to be simple. They're gonna be, you're not going to be worrying about the lighting. You're not going to be worrying about the... Uh, character positions, all these things that you're worrying about when you're making your final layout are going to be solved by doing your storyboards. So that will be making it way quicker for you to make uh, decisions in the final layout if everything else is already stored, sorted out with your storyboards. So that's reason number one, you get quicker. The other reason number two is you figure out the dialogue as you go along sometimes you you probably don't have the right dialogue uh, in your script for a certain guy at a certain point in time when your characters are interacting but when you actually get the time take the time to make your storyboard you're able to come up with some dialogue sometimes the other thing is if there's any revisions that need to be made you make them you work is still very rough uh, you do not want to make revisions in your final draft trust me I've been there many times this is, this is everything I'm saying today is from experience uh, you want to make your mistakes and revise them and change them in the comic when you're still in the storyboard stage you don't want to take that to the final layout whereby you'd be wasting a lot more money and maybe more time you know reason number three with storyboards can become clever with your storytelling now how is this possible you already done in the script how do you become clever with your storytelling well if you are a storyteller you know that a comic is more than just the script it's also the, the visual representations of everything so if you want to be clever with your storytelling you might add very many visual elements or visual patterns that do not need script but they contribute a lot to your final your final story your final story that you're telling for example you might hint at something in an earlier page and have it revealed at a later page you can only make this kind of outrageous planning through storyboards if you go straight to your final layout you're probably not going to be able to pull that off the chances that you'll pull that off are very very low reason number four you're able to arrange your story events i think this helps you out make the story much more interesting i think that one uh, pretty much says everything about itself reason number five you're able to focus your story this means you're able to cut out the chaff the unnecessary bits the plot holes the characterization becomes much more proper because sometimes you might write something in script and when you're working with it in the storyboard you realize oh well this character isn't necessarily supposed to communicate this way uh, the script talks about the emotion in this kind of format but if we do the story but we're like okay maybe this is poor characterization for this specific character he's sort of like an angry guy why is he very jolly in this part of you know uh, so you only forget that kind of stuff out with the storyboards and you figure out uh, solutions to those problems with storyboards so yeah a storyboards a huge problem server Seven. You clean out your mistakes. This, 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 this is quite similar to the previous one. Yeah. But yeah, you get what it means. You just take out your mistakes. You're able to clean up all kinds of mistakes using the, the story. You're able to you're able to choose the right kind of shots and angles for your comic. Uh, during the storyboard stage or the thumbnailing, you can figure out the proper angles, the proper shots you need uh, to bring out a specific emotional, specific emotional response uh, to your readers. And this is 
what <laughs> comics are really best off you know you really want to get an emotional response from your reader and it's the reason why you, you're making comics in the first place and the best way to do it is you gotta use the tools that you have the camera angles the okay we're not going to go very deep into that but here's a quick example if you use narrow shots people will feel tense you know whoever is reading will become very tense because the, the shots are narrow they're feeling that that squeeze you know you feel like it's squeeze <laughs> so so narrow shots are very good for horror stories you know uh, if you have a horror story you're working with uh, you, you should play about with uh, narrow shots and then uh, the next shot would probably be a wide shot uh, which would release the tension. Uh, white shots are less tense. They represent freedom, they represent importance, they represent scale. Okay, reason number nine, eight. Reason number nine character movement, positioning, and direction. Sometimes if you go straight away into the final piece of work, that is your final draft. If you do not have a storyboard, you're, you're going to be playing about with a bunch of ideas. You're going to spend a little more time trying to figure out, okay, where are my characters facing from the script? What does that say? Uh, where, where are my characters going? You know, uh, who's facing who? Who's interacting with who? Uh, you want to be able to have that already sorted out using your storyboards where you're doing things roughly and when you come to your final layout you just really like dashing right through it you know for the final reason teamwork is simplified if you need to make some changes and communicate to let's say an inker you're able to show them what you need from the storybook. You're able to show, you're able to show the person making panels probably, if you have one, uh, how the panels look like on the storyboard. You're able to show the person that's doing the penciling how you want the character to look like from the storyboard. So if you have uh, projects that you are not personally drawing, that you are not personally uh, pretty much inking or contributing to on a very, very uh, deep level and you want other people to, to work for you on them and you, and you want other people to work on those stories, a storyboard pretty much helps you communicate everything that you need to communicate in a much better way, quick and efficient way in that people are able to tell the people you want to work with are able to tell what you need to get done. So, yeah, storyboards, yay! Storyboards, yay! Okay, this has been this has been storyboards. Do use them; they're important, they're useful. You'll make less mistakes in your stories, less plot holes, and it will save you time. So, use storyboards, and until next time, dream of space.